Hi, I'm Matthew Parker from the Sheffield Biomedical Research Centre, and today I'm going to tell you about Periscope, a tool we've been using to detect subgenomic RNA in SARS-CoV-2 genomic sequencing data. In Sheffield, we've sequenced around 2,800 SARS-CoV-2 genomes to date, and we're part of COG UK, which is a consortium to sequence as many SARS-CoV-2 genomes as possible to inform um, public health um, response to the virus. So we've been collaborating with the teaching hospital here in um, Sheffield as part of the NHS, uh, who have been sending us positive samples, um, which have already been extracted, um, where, which we then perform Arctic network PCR on, subsequent nanopore gridiron sequencing, and then the Arctic bioinformatics SOP for us then to upload consensus sequence to um, COG UK. So I'm sure many of you are aware, but the Arctic Network Protocol is, uh, has been developed as an amplicon tiling approach to um, get a good consensus sequence from um, SARS-CoV-2 samples that, that could be degraded. Um, obviously, RNA is subject to um, degradation. So this protocol is 98 amplicons split into two pools, um, which are then cleaned up. They're combined and then we sequence um, those samples on our nanopore gridiron. And today we've been doing around 48 samples per flow cell. So 47 positive samples plus one negative. We then follow their standard bioinformatics process, which involves filtering reads, primer and adapter trimming. We map them to the reference genome, we then call variants against that reference. We filter those variants based on quality and then we produce a consensus sequence by amending the reference in light of these variants. So before I continue to talk about our tool, Periscope, I wanted to give you a brief overview of how coronaviruses are thought to express their genome. So the coronavirus is a 30,000 30, base pair long positive stranded RNA virus, which is made up of several open reading frames. ORF1A and 1B are translated to protein directly from the genome, but the more three prime open reading frames are translated from RNA intermediates termed subgenomic RNAs. So the RNA polymerase, which is encoded by SARS-CoV-2, um, SARS-CoV-2's genome, starts at the three prime end and um, transcribes a negative strand of RNA. It does this until it hits a, a sequence in the genome called the transcription regulatory site. And this, um, these sequences are present at the start of all the open reading frames at the at three prime end of the genome and is also contained within the leader sequence. So what happens is um, the complementarity between the two TRS sequence and sequences brings them close together, um, allowing the RNA polymerase to switch templates from the open reading frame to the leader sequence in the five prime end of the genome. So this results in these short subgenomic RNA um, transcripts, all with a subgenomic, uh, sorry, all with a leader sequence at their ends. So the leader sequence should be present on all subgenomic RNA. And it just so happens that primer one in the Arctic network protocol is almost a, is a, is a perfect match for the leader sequence. So what happens in this case is um, primer one forms a, an amplicon with the, pri the other primer in the pool at the right hand side and produces uh, amplicons, which are a result of the subgenomic RNA. So we thought we could use uh, the, leader the presence of the leader sequence to identify subgenomic RNA in our SARS-CoV-2 genomic sequencing data. So if you look at some um, raw reads from um, our samples, we can see here amplicon 91 on the right-hand side of this um, figure is a normal amplicon where we see genomic um, RNA. You see the amplicon ends at the, um, the reads end at the end of the amplicon, and you see soft clip reads, which are a result of the adapter, because this is raw data here. We've not done any adapter trimming. At the left-hand side is Amplicon 89, and you see the reads actually terminate at the ORF6 TRS site, and we're left with soft clipping in the middle of the Amplicon, which is actually the leader sequence. And so we can use the presence of the leader sequence to classify our reads into subgenomic or genomic RNA. So because they're um, often shorter, or in some cases longer, the subgenomic RNA reads are often filtered out by bioinformatic processes. So the Arctic SOP recommends that you filter reads below 400 base pairs and above 700 base pairs. But if you look at this plot here, this shows the, the size of the different 
uh, types of reads, so the genomic reads versus subgenomic, you see that some are a lot shorter and some are longer than this cutoff. So if you apply this cutoff, that you lose subgenomic RNA from your data. So if you're going to do some subgenomic RNA analysis, you have to do it on raw, unfiltered um, sequencing data. So if we do this and count the number of subgenomic RNA reads in our data set and then normalize per um, thousand genomic reads from the same amplicon, we get a measurement of the expression level of our subgenomic RNAs um, that we can use to compare across samples and across cohorts. So in this figure, you can see um, subgenomic RNAs M and N are the most expressed, which follows um, what is known in the literature about subgenomic RNA expression in SARS-CoV-2. And you can also see that we, um, we have good agreement between two different centers. So the Sheffield data is around 1,000 sequences, whereas the Glasgow data set we have here is from around 50. So we wanted to know if this was reproducible. Um, so we repeated... Um, two samples, four times each, um, using technical replicates from the same RNA. Um, and you can see good agreement between each of these replicates. So nice R values of generally above 0.88, um, all significant after multiple testing. We also wanted to then validate this on orthogonal methods. And we didn't want to reuse qPCR because that's another way of amplifying subgenomic RNA that could introduce bias. So we used Illumina metagenomic data to compare to our Arctic uh, nanopore data. So this experiment is from Glasgow, where they took Vero E6 cells, uh, either wild type with ACE2 or ACE2 and TMPRSS2, and sequenced via uh, either with ONT Arctic or Illumina metagenomic sequencing. And you can see a broad agreement between the levels of each ORF in these two data sets. If I combine all the subgenomic RNA um, and look at total subgenomic RNA over time in these data sets, you can see that um, both Illumina and Arctic broadly agree on the kinetics of subgenomic RNA levels across this time course. Um, and what's interesting is ACE2 and TMPRS2 expressing Vero E6 cells seem to have an expedited um, infection where the peak of subgenomic RNA expression happens at 48 hours before it drops away. So one thing we can also look at is non-canonical subgenomic RNA. So non-canonical subgenomic RNAs are subgenomic RNAs which do not contain a leader um, junction in the region of the TRSB site. So there is no TRS site, but we, we, we see um, subgenomic RNA um, being created from these regions of the genome. So if you look at this plot on the left, you can see a plot of the, the SARS-CoV-2 genome, and each of these dots represents a, a non-canonical subgenomic RNA that we've detected. The size of the dot is the number of reads and the color is the number of samples. So you can see there are definitely some recurrent non-canonical subgenomic RNAs being produced from the SARS-CoV-2 genome, and those are reproducible in the Glasgow data set. If we zoom in a little bit on the three prime end of the genome, you can see that a lot of these non-canonical subgenomic RNAs are, uh, are found around the ORF start sites which could indicate some stochastic RNA polymerase jumping around when it, when it um, switches templates. It's not really understood how this process works, and so this is interesting that we can use uh, Periscope to detect these non-canonical subgenomic RNAs. Even more interestingly, in some samples, these, sub, uh, these non-canonical subgenomic RNAs are expressed at very high levels. So for example, in this sample at position 27544, almost 200 reads support this non-canonical subgenomic RNA. So here again, you've got Amplicon 87. This is just genomic RNA. You can see it covers the whole Amplicon. And then Amplicon 85, you can see these truncated reads which contain leader sequence, um, which tells us that these are subgenomic RNAs and there's no ORF, no, no ORF start site around this location. We've also looked in vitro, um, to see if non-canonical subgenomic RNA followed the same um, kinetic pattern as um, canonical subgenomic RNA. So the dashed line here is canonical, the solid line here is non-canonical. You can see over time, um, the two types of subgenomic RNA broadly agree with each other. So just to conclude, Subgenomic RNA is readily and reproducibly detected in Arctic network nanopore sequencing data, and a simple search for read containing leader sequence allows their identification. It can also be used for Illumina sequencing data, 
And we think it unlocks the potential of SARS-CoV-2 genomic sequencing to further understand subgenomic RNA. You can um, download Periscope from GitHub, and also this is a, a preprint of um, our findings. So just to acknowledge everybody, everyone in the Sheffield COVID-19 Genomics Group, which is a collaboration between many different um, departments within the university, and uh, Simon Malal and Silvana at Vanderbilt and um, in Australia for originally putting us onto um, the subgenomic RNA work. And then the Glasgow data is uh, with thanks from um, Centre for the Virus Research in, in Glasgow. Thank you.